Tape train the people only to consume. Step two, infiltrate adults with the news. Step three, indoctrinate the children through the schools and the music and the apps on the phones that they use. Step four, separate the right from the left. Step five, separate the white from the black. Step six, separate the rich from the poor. Use religion and equality to separate them more. Step seven, fabricate a problem made a lie. Step eight, put it on the news every night. Step nine, when people start to fight and divide, take control. This is called situational design. They can't stop us. New World Order's plan for world domination. As the architects of control, they manipulate the very fabric of our existence, stretching their influence across nations, orchestrating a symphony of control. An organization that seeks to manipulate governments, economies, and even the minds of the masses. They crave dominion over every soul, driven by an insatiable hunger for control. But how do they maintain their grip on humanity? Through manipulation and fear, they sow seeds of discord, pitting us against each other, while they pull the strings from the shadows. From surveillance technologies to mind control experiments, their insidious reach knows no bounds. And what becomes of those who dare to expose them? They vanish, swallowed by the abyss. The New World Order leaves no trace, eradicating all who challenge their supremacy. For those who dare to expose the truth face dire consequences, whistleblowers vanishing into the night, their voices silenced forever. Forty-four U.S. presidents have descended from European royal bloodlines. Thirty-four of them are genetic descendants of Charlemagne, the 8th century king of the Franks, and 19 are directly descended from King Edward III of England. The presidential candidate with the most royal genes has won every American election. The banking families in America, such as the Bush family, are from the same bloodline as European aristocratic families. In 2004, George W. Bush won against Democrat John Kerry, his 16th cousin. This pattern raises questions that cannot be easily dismissed as mere coincidence. The Windsor-Bush bloodline extends back to Babylonian kings and Egyptian pharaohs and has ruled over humanity since the beginning of recorded history, strategically positioning members of their bloodline within both factions of America's artificial political divide. The ancient monarchs have cunningly secured their claim to the throne, all while disguising behind the facade of democratic elections. A similar maneuver was observed in 1990 when Democrat Bill Clinton emerged victorious over his Republican cousin, Bob Dole. Strange that George W. Bush said he couldn't have predicted the 9-11's attacks, but shortly before the tragic events of September 11th, witnesses came forward, documenting a clandestine meeting between Osama bin Laden and the CIA section chief. This meeting lasted for 10 days, taking place in an American hospital in Dubai. French intelligence, disturbed by this revelation, deliberately leaked media reports. It is also strange how World Trade Center owner Larry Silverstein, just weeks before the attacks, secured a staggering $3.5 billion insurance policy specifically covering acts of terrorism. Meanwhile, President Bush received a daily debriefing memo on August 6th, explicitly stating that bin Laden was determined to attack within the United States. Even in August, the FBI ended up arresting a militant linked to Al-Qaeda in Boston, who was found to possess Boeing aircraft and flight training manuals. Even Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak personally informed the United States of an impending catastrophe in New York. 12 days before September 11th. Yet George W. Bush claims he couldn't have predicted the attacks. On September 11, 1990, President George H.W. Bush mentioned the New World Order in his State of the Union address. Coincidentally, he gave another speech about it on the same date the following year. Little did anyone know that 11 years later, September 11th would become a date etched in history. You break down the date 9 plus 1 plus 1 equals 11, and September 11th is the 254th day of the year, leaving 111 days remaining. New York, the state where the attacks took took place was the 11th state to endorse the Constitution. The Freemasonic Statue of Liberty, located near the Trade Center, stands on an 11-pointed star pedestal. The number 11 itself resembles the Twin Towers, and it was American Airlines Flight 11, carrying 11 crew members that allegedly hit the North Tower. 
President George W. Bush's actions following the attacks are also intriguing. On September 11th, he announced an 11-day national state of mourning, and 11 days later, on September 22nd, he presented the Patriot Act before Congress. Some suggest these events were part of a super ritual involving the release of the Angel Pan, associated with the number 11. Even World War I was declared over at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, now celebrated as Veterans Day. What secrets are secret societies hiding about astrology? During the construction of the Washington Monument on August 7, 1880, at exactly 10.59 a.m., the cornerstone of the obelisk was laid as the sun passed over the star Sirius, marking a celestial alignment of great importance. Similarly, on the day the foundation stone for the White House was laid, the moon entered the 23rd degree of Virgo, aligning with the Dragon's Head node. This synchronicity in celestial position positioning sparks more interest surrounding the planning and construction of Washington, D.C., also on September 18, 1793, when the Capitol building was founded. On that morning, the sun was also passing through the same degree of Virgo, further emphasizing the connection between celestial events and the city's construction. These correspondences are too important to be mere coincidence. Whoever was directing the planning of Washington, D.C. not only possessed considerable knowledge of astrology, but also had a vested interest in highlighting the role of the sign Virgo. In fact, Washington, D.C. boasts an impressive 22 full zodiacs hidden within its architecture. The cities of Boston, New York, Philadelphia, Baltimore, and Washington, D.C. are all on a diagonal ley line that extends to Teo Hittican and Stonehenge. The Masons, who were involved in the construction of these buildings, were knowledgeable about astrology and aligned important events with astrological phenomena, and that knowledge is still hidden to this day. Millionaires do not use astrology, but billionaires do. French Freemason Pierre L'Enfant in the 1790s designed the street plan and architectural layout of Washington, D.C to include occult symbols such as an iron cross, the Star of David, an upside-down pentagram, and a pyramid with an owl on top. These symbols are associated with the Illuminati and ancient Egyptian goddess Sirius. The Washington Monument, a colossal obelisk, is also a symbol that generates energy. The layout of Washington, D.C. also mirrors the positions of stars in the sky, particularly those associated with the sign of Virgo. The sun was on Sirius on the day the Declaration of Independence was agreed upon. The mason who signed the agreement was clearly aware of the importance of July 4th being a cosmic event. Independent armies, medals, and fiat currency is but a relic of the past. Open borders, a formidable world army, an all-encompassing world court, and a cashless credit-based currency managed through microchips. The New World Order is not a conspiracy, but a well-planned agenda. Organizations like the UN, EU, Council on Foreign Relations, and the Bilderberg Group believe they possess a divine right to seize absolute control over your life. Their grand design seeks to merge and centralize power, forming an all encompassing world government. The Illuminati traces its roots back thousands of years, weaving its influence through the annals of history, from Sumer to Babylon, from Egypt to the realms of prehistory. Ancient interbreeding bloodlines hold the reins of power, with 13 elite families reigning supreme. The Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Habsburgs, and the House of Lorraine. Their DNA forming a hierarchical structure, the past is riddled with accounts of assassinations, secret alliances, palace plots, and betrayals in times of war. Many influential figures have been members of the Skull and Bone Society, including U.S. Presidents William H. Taft, George Herbert Walker Bush, and George Walker Bush, as well as Senators, Governors, Congressmen, Supreme Court Justices. The Skull and Bones Secret Society was officially founded at Yale University in 1832, but its roots can be traced back to Freemasonry and the Pirates-slash-Brotherhood of Death. Like the Masons, Bonesmen choose their own initiates, and the only way to enter the Brotherhood is to be tapped by an existing member. The society is known for its secretive rituals and symbolism, with its building called the Tomb, and its decor featuring death-related imagery. Skull and Bones members often hold positions in the CIA and intelligence community. The society has been accused of manipulating the political system by having members on both sides of the political spectrum. The Bush family, in particular, 
has had multiple members in the Skull and Bone Society, and they have been involved in various fraudulent activities. The Skull and Bone Society has been linked to financing both sides of world wars and the Russian Revolution.